Welcome to The Finish Line with So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and The Finish Line is all about, well, finishing our quilt tops. And last month, I shared with you the way I like to make free motion rainbows. Well, that started a thought process, and I was wondering, could I make rainbows using a series of round rulers? Well, I didn't actually come up with a rainbow, but I did come up with a really nice design that my girlfriend Angela calls the rooster tail. So I have my machine set up for ruler work, and I have that same beautiful variegated thread, and I'm going to quilt the rooster tail on this tablecloth. It has been aged long enough, I can get it quilted now. And you'll be able to use this pattern with any series of round rulers or even oval rulers. I'll be using five rulers, starting from a small one, going to a large one. But you don't have to use five rulers. Let me show you how much fun this pattern really is. So this is what five rulers will make. So it does have that little bit of a rooster tail. To start the rooster tail, we're going to need a seam or a straight line. And then I'm going to use these five rulers in order starting from the smallest. And I'm just going to put it anywhere on that line. I'm going to start with my needle on the line, stitch over, and keep the needle in that position. Take that out, get my next size. I do not want to overlap threads, so I do make sure that that ruler is covering. And I'm going to stitch all the way to that next side. And if you go past the line, it really does not matter. The line's just giving us a guide. Go to the next size, and I'm going to go over, stop, the next size, and it won't matter how big or small you move that ruler. We just want to keep our needle down, and stitch back over to that imaginary line, and then one more time with the largest ruler over. So it sort of gives us a rainbow, but it's off-centered. Now that I've stopped here, I need to pick up that small ruler again. Now you can always travel back if you'd like, or just leave that needle down and stitch. Coming over so that you're hitting one of those lines. Keep the needle down, get the next ruler, and stitch all the way over until you hit a line. Stop. Next size. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm just using one ruler after another. I'm always stopping so I'm not crossing a line. And the rulers are going in order. So I'm just laying them down so I'm not going over top of any of those other lines. If you come to any line, just stop right there and start a new pattern. So if I want to travel, I can leave that big ruler down and start just adding those rulers. I'm just trying not to cross over any previous stitching lines. If I don't have enough room to come into a smaller area, I'm going to be able to stop or move that ruler. But I would rather fill in that spot and stop at some point. Of course, this is going to be a quarter inch bigger because of the foot, but we just need to stop right where there's a line. And if this is not a big enough area to start a rooster tail, travel back and then start. And you can see how quick this is going to be and how much space it's going to cover. These five nesting rulers did come with a Bernina set, but there are a lot out there that you can use. 
and they do not have to be nesting rulers. You just want to start with the smaller one and go up in size. So let's see it on the quilt. So I've started with both of those threads up at the top. I will be using this as my first line and it's my only line I'm going to need. I have my five rulers, so I'm going to start with the smallest. And I'm really not worried about that size. I just want to stitch until I hit that line. So I've stitched to that first edge. Pull out ruler number two. And stitch back. Ruler three. And if the rulers happen to shift a little bit, no one is going to be the wiser. Four. Stop somewhere close to that line, and then the last one. So I've started here but my next row of stitching is going to start on this side because I have the odd number rulers. Now I can start my second. With that needle down, I'm pulling out that small ruler and I'm starting the next one. And I'm stopping on any row of stitching that I've done previous. One, two, three, Fifth one is getting me in the next direction. And here's one of these areas where I have a V coming in. So that would have been a situation where I would have gone back and now started. So I'm filling in that hole not trying to work in a point. And it doesn't mean I need to go back to that hole. I can go up to that corner. I'll fill in that hole, so let's see what it looks like. Ruler one. it really does look like a rooster tail. Let me get some quilting done and I'll show you what it's going to look like when it's all done. There are different ways that we can handle the corners. So this was my rooster tail and that line was the fifth one. When that was done I did one small, stopped at the corner, and just use that same ruler just to kind of make some of those marks to get in. I then had to travel along this area and I had a bit of a spot here that I needed to fill in. So with just the ruler I just made these little points sort of like waves. And then the last one 
I've come up right here and I'm going to be able to start in this new area. These little points are going to fill in areas and we don't always have to use them in order when we're filling up spots. You might find you'll only need three rulers or four rulers just to get into an area. So here was the starting thread that I went this way. When I came to it, I just went around it and stopped wherever there was a thread. I did try to keep my threads from crossing over. However, I wasn't always successful. But because this is a busy pattern, I'm not going to bother with it. And you could take it out, but for me, it's fine. Here's one stitch where my ruler slid a bit. But once again, the pattern is busy enough, I'm not going to worry about it. So it really is an oops friendly pattern. It is a fun all over pattern. And let me show you the back. It is a busy pattern on the back, but you still can see all of those points. It really does have a nice overall pattern and it does look like a rooster tail. In order to avoid basting pins or basting altogether, I did use a fusible batting. Because there were so many different angles and so many rulers, I didn't want pins or threads to get in the way. Once you get comfortable using those five rulers, this will go together very quickly. It covers a lot of space and it's very oops friendly. Having that variegated thread also added some fun to the table topper. I will put a link in the description so you can see when I actually did make this table topper. Now I just need to get this bound and I'll be able to use it at last. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today on The Finish Line. Feel free to subscribe. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and I do have a newsletter all under So Very Easy. Thanks again for joining me. Bye for now.